Hello, welcome back to the channel. It's a beautiful day after a long rainy day yesterday here in Eastern North Carolina. And I believe we just got just over a half an inch of rain. So everything in the garden today is a bit damp. On the upside, I don't have to water anything. That's a plus. <laughs> I could be doing other things here in the garden, but I thought since there's quite a few new subscribers, and thank you to all the new subscribers subscribing to my channel, uh, I'd reintroduce myself and let and then do a fall garden tour to show you what's going on, where, when, why, how, etc. So my name is Jason. This is Sophie. Say hello, Sophie. No? Okay. Back to chewing on a stick. And I'm building a garden here in Eastern North Carolina on an acre and a half. So what's this channel really all about? I'm not so much of a how-to channel or showing you the latest, greatest doohickey or thingamabob. Think of me as more of one of those channels where somebody's building their house or a sh restoring a chateau or something along those lines, you know, building their homestead. We've all probably seen them. I know I've wa I watched it. Oh, there's a bird in the greenhouse. Stand by. <laughs> Hold on. Let's see if we can get you. No, 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 no. There you go. There you go. You're almost there. Did you get into there? You're so close. You're so close. The exit's right there. No. Yep, yep, yep. You're in the right direction. Come on. There you go. Almost. There you go. <laughs> well, that was fun. <laughs> so, where was I? I introduced myself. I said what this channel's about. I'm building a garden. So let's start walking around the garden. I'll give you a quick tour and we'll talk about what's happening and what will be happening in the upcoming months. So we're gonna start out here in the orchard. Now, the orchard doesn't look like much at all, but believe me, there are trees here. And in fact, I'm standing next to one of them, which is the peach tree, one of my two peach trees both my peach trees put fruit on this year. I think I got two or three good fruits off of each tree and my wife loved each one of them. So let me show you some of the other trees here in the orchard. Believe it or not, here in this overgrown mess is a red Jonathan, I believe, or Jonathan apple tree. The tag is down there someplace. <laughs> and I had to build this makeshift fence, which I will be improving over the winter to try to keep the deer away because they like eating all the leaves off of the apple tree. And I do live in deer country. I'm fairly rural, so. And this overgrown mess here, which has verbena, can't really see it now, but there's foxglove in here, as well as, of course, native grasses and unnative grasses. But <laughs> Last fall or early this spring, I can't remember which one it was, it doesn't really matter. I put down homegrown compost around this tree the homegrown compost hadn't, hadn't gotten hot enough to cook off all the weed seeds or flower seeds. And I knew this, but I didn't really, didn't really care because it had still a nutritional value and my soil really needs help. So I put it all around and my plan was just to mow around this. Well, once I started seeing the verbena come up in some of the other flowering plants, I said, I'm just gonna leave it. It looks kind of nice. Uh, again, it's a bit overgrown, but there's natural things living in here, frogs and bugs and God knows what else. I'm always worried about snakes, even though I haven't run across any poisonous snakes on the property yet, you never know. Once everything dies back for the winter, I'll be cutting everything down to the ground around the tree and we'll be putting a new fence up around this, which will look a lot less ghetto or rednecky or rednecky ghetto, something along those lines. Let's go look at my other apple tree. This here is a gala apple tree. And it has done pretty well since I planted it here almost two years ago. Uh, this tree had a taller leader in the middle, but deer got to it. <laughs> the deer really didn't bother the tree this year, which was excellent. Although some bug did come along and eat the heck out of the leaves. I don't understand what that was all about. It's been putting on new growth, which is great. It's still very much alive. It does have a slight tilt to it due to the winds. And I don't really just have a desire to straighten it out because a straight tree is a boring tree. I always like a little tree that has a curve or a slight kink to it. Either way, this is the other apple tree I have in here in the orchard. I have other fruiting trees also here in the orchard. Let me show you those. Just here in the shade of the power pole <laughs> is one of my three pawpaw trees. 
There's another one closer to the camera there, but it's very small, there's not much to look at. It is alive though, which is always a plus. This here is my other pawpaw tree. Now this tree and the other tree got nibbled on a little bit this year by deer, but they're still alive and they should be shedding all their leaves very shortly here. They typically go and start losing all their leaves in about end of October, beginning of November, even if the weather's still warm out, but don't worry, they will come back next May, June, I think it's closer to June. Pawpaws, from what I've observed, I'm no pawpaw expert, they do like very, when the soil gets very warm, then they start coming to life. But there's more. This here is my fig tree, and this fig tree has kind of been through the wars. First year got nibbled on by deer and got knocked back a bit. The second year, which was last year, I believe, it got hit with that horrible freeze that we had around Christmas time. And again, it got knocked back a bit, but as you can see, it's green and growing. And hopefully this winter as well, I'll build a better looking fence than this little contraption-y thing I have here to help keep deer away from it because deer, strangely enough, will eat a fig or at least nibble on it or cause some damage. This space here is gonna be the shade garden or the fern garden or the ferny shade garden. Ferns like shade. So that's what this space is going to be. This project won't be happening for quite some time because I need to develop more of the rose garden hedge line and tree line to help create shade here in this space for all the ferns and coral bells and anything else I decide to plant in here that's deer resistant. But hit the subscribe button and that bell icon. Hopefully you can follow along and see how this space develops over time. This is the entrance to the rose garden. It's a 60 by 60 space. And over here is the latest extension that I've been doing to the borders for the Rose Garden. So let's take a closer look at some of that and I can give a quick explanation as to what's going on, what will be happening in the near future. This mess right here, believe it or not, is a compost pile. Yes, I, <laughs> I put a lot of garden waste here, had a lot of various garden debris here. There was, at the center of all this, there was a wood pile, wood chip pile. And I'm pretty sure all that's rotted away now, but I kept piling stuff on top of it. Of course, as everything breaks down, it creates good growing medium. And of course, everything you can see grows in it. I hope to have this gone this winter. I hope to have it gone last winter. And this, all this material here, the compost and everything else will go along the back border and the side border because I'm doing in place composting. And I'll show you that now. Now, for many of you who've been watching the channel for a while, you know all, everything that's going on here because I've talked about it ad nauseum. So I do apologize to you. And I'll try to keep this as short and brief as possible. But this is just sort of try to bring the new subscribers up to speed as to what's going on and what I am doing. So when I first moved to the property, I had a lot of trees taken down, had a lot of wood chips. And I've used those wood chips in various places throughout the garden. And one of the things I did was start laying down the wood chips along the areas where there'll be future rose beds. And I will show you the rose beds I'm currently working on in just a moment. And then I kept putting grass on top of those and other garden waste. And essentially I'm going to compost in place. My thinking is, is that I pile all this stuff on top. As you can see, there's plenty of grass and weeds and vines and all sorts of other stuff growing right now. But in the foreground here, you have some black weed fabric. And I'm gonna take the black weed fabric this winter and cover up this first section here at the entrance of the rose garden. Of course, in the next two years, hopefully that will generate enough heat underneath and block all the sunlight, of course. And that then rots everything down underneath, thus giving me a pretty good growing medium to grow into. And I shouldn't theoretically have to add any or that much compost into the mix. If I had just taken it straight back down to the ground, marked out what I want, I'd have to bring in all this compost material, which costs quite a bit of money. So I'm trying to let Mother Nature do a lot of the work for me. And right now it does look like a hot mess because there's all this grass and weed and whatnot. But once I cover it up with the weed fabric and start killing it back, it all basically becomes, com it all becomes compost, which then I can, th again, theoretically plant into. Yes, I will have to deal with weed seeds and all that other good stuff, but again, hopefully I don't have to bring in or apply as much compost. And if I leave the space covered for about two years, it should break down the material underneath very well. 
We'll see. This is an experiment. I've never done anything like this before. And if you haven't, if you've never, if you haven't been watching the channel, I've only been gardening for about five years. So the theory is there. I don't know how well it'll work in practice. Now let's go look at the bits of the rose garden I have, have completed and what will be happening to that in the near future. Now, when I first moved to Eastern North Carolina and I bought this property and I decided to build this massive garden, to me it's massive. I've come from a quarter acre suburban lot to an acre and a half. So it's a pretty huge jump in gardening space. But I decided to fill the entire property with garden. So here we are in the rose garden and things are moving along. Uh, the roses that I've planted are doing quite well. And this year, thanks to my diligent spraying of deer spray, deer repellent spray, and my motion sprinkler, I've been able to keep the deer really off of the roses and some of the daylilies and other things I have planted in here that deer like to eat, which is great because everything's been able to flush out. Now, hopefully, by next spring, I can complete my hedge line along the fence over here between the veg and the rose garden. The yellow hedging you can see there in the back, that's golden ticket privet. It's a non-invasive privet developed by Proven Winners, I believe. And I've been purchasing where I can, taking cuttings where I can and growing from that. So right now, I've almost gotten down to the end. I hope by next spring I will have accomplished that. Now I am getting 10, 10 more shrubs and they're quite, they'll be quite small, only four inches. And I'm not sure if I'm going to be planting them in the front of the rose garden here this fall, or if I'm going to be just maybe up potting them and waiting till next spring to plant them out. If you guys have any thoughts on the matter, please leave those comments below. I'm always open to suggestions and comments and sometimes you may leave a comment directed at me, but somebody else may read it and say, wow, that's some good advice or that's a good point that that person made. It's that whole YouTube community thing, you know, learn, grow, share, all that good happiness. <laughs> so I'm not gonna bore you in detail as to every single plant that's going on in here. A lot of this has been established for a couple of years. Now I have this year gone and planted my climbing rose finally, and let me show you that. So this is the Generous Gardener, I believe it's called, from David Austin. And I have built this crazy rebar cage tower thing for it to grow up in. And it's doing, again, quite well so far. Now, it being the end of the season, I don't expect much more growth from it. But hopefully next year, it gets to at least four to five feet high, maybe taller. I'm not sure how it will grow next year, but... Again, we'll have to wait and see. What I have right here in front of me is some um, evening scented primrose and it's grown quite well. And I'm hoping that next year it turns around in flowers. If I'm not mistaken, and I could be, so if I'm mistaken on anything you hear, please leave a comment below. Uh, this is a biannual, so it will flower next year and then go to seed and set more seed and so on and so forth. Now I hope to do some little more planting in this bed this year and let me show you where here we are in the new extension that i just did recently of the rose border now this is coming towards the entrance and here we are at the entrance and you then you can see the hot mess behind me which i was just talking about over here i have three earth angel roses i believe they're a heritage type i'm not entirely sure about that but either way i grew them from cuttings and they're sizable enough that I can plant them into the ground now. What I hope to do is plant them, create almost a little hedge, and plant them right about here. Along the front over here will eventually be, will be a low hedge of boxwoods, probably about two foot high. Then there'll be a little space for various plants or plantings. And then there'll be the three earth angel uh, roses here. And then of course in the front will be the privet hedging. So I hope to get those three Earth Angel roses planted here soon, maybe even Monday. So again, if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe. Click that bell icon to be notified when I do post up a new video because I have to get those Earth Angel roses planted soon so they get, can get a good rooting in before we get any sort of frosts or hard freezes. Again, I'm in growing zone 8A, Eastern North Carolina, near the coast. We may not get a hard freeze until December, Jan January. 
We will probably get light freezes much sooner than that, obviously, mid to late November, but our ground never freezes here. So that being said, I don't want the roses to experience the shock of a hard freeze unless they have a good rooting in. So I want to get those planted sooner than later, and I'm going to take the gamble and plant them now. Not now now, but now. Let's move on to the veg garden. All right, here we are in front of the veg garden. My veg garden is 40 feet by 80 feet deep. We'll look at more of what's going on inside. There's not much. The garden itself, as many of your gardens may be, are, is winding down, so there's less and less growing. But I intend or hope to keep growing as much as I can throughout the winter. And during the winter, I'm going to try growing again stuff in my greenhouse. And I'll touch on that later. Here in front, though, looking very tired and very beat up, <laughs> are my Mexican sunflowers. Now, I have them on both sides of the gate. And they, they've just been spectacular this year. Uh, the birds love them. The bees love them. The hummingbirds love them. Moths, butterflies. It's, it's astounding the amount of creatures that I've seen hovering in and around them. I'm seeing less and less bees right now. My guess is they're winding down for the season, but there's still a lot of butterflies and moths and whatnot on these things. Now, when these are gone for the year, when they're done, when I finally pull them out, and I've already started pulling some of them out due to the two tropical storms that we got this year, uh, I plan on putting boxwoods in place and cr again, creating about a four foot high hedge to cover up the fencing here. Now I will replant these out in the flower garden next year. Okay, this is for the new people. Again, new subscribers who have who've just tuning in or trying to figure out what this channel is all about or what my garden is, etc., etc. I have my, this is my veg garden and I have a couple of different sections. I have my raised bed section and then I have my in-ground bed section. The raised bed section extends towards the back on this side and Right now it's winding down. A lot of these beds are being disused for the season. I still have garlic planting to do. I still have spinach to plant. Ah, uh, there's probably something else that I can't think of. So I'll be doing that within the next week or two. The garlic probably won't get planted till mid early, mid to probably mid November. I'll plant my garlic out again, just cause it's so warm. I could plant it earlier. It just starts growing faster. And maybe that's something I should do. If you think I should be growing my garlic sooner than mid-November, let me know in the comments below. Now on my raised bed side, uh, there's pretty much not much going on. So once the what I have here is left and torn out, then what I'll do is I'll cover up the entire space with black weed fabric. That will help suppress the weeds and help rot down anything that I leave in the ground, i.e. plant roots, uh, there's some wood chip paths that I have here. So that'll all be warm underneath the black weed fabric and help break down and rot down. And then early, early next spring, I will amend the soil with compost, cow manure, that kind of thing. I try not to use any fertilizers because there's already enough or there's enough rotting organic material in the ground. I feel adding and spending the money on fertilizers, that kind of thing is just I don't know, it seems like a waste and unnecessary if your soil is good enough. And that's my goal, is to always make the soil good enough, if not better. And this space I've been using for numerous years now, and the stuff grew very well this year, so it's just a matter of then maybe, again, adding more compost or mending the soil. Let's go take a look at what's going on in the back of the veg garden in my greenhouse. All right, back here on the one side of my greenhouse, I have a couple of tables. One is a potting potting table that I made a few years ago and there's links as to what I how I made this uh, table set up on my website growinggreenfinger.com so if you want to know how I made it or even the plans to make you one yourself you can go over there again growinggreenfinger.com and then I have this cheap plastic bolding table doohickey thing because I had so many seed starts and cuttings this year I needed sort of a, an extension now I'm thinking about next year already Maybe along the side fence line, I want to wind up doing more tables or a bigger table or a long, few long boards. I'm not hundred percent sure on that yet. And we're definitely probably doing something because I intend to continue taking cuttings and I'll need some place for those cuttings to grow. 
And some of those cuttings and plants that I have on the side tables will be going into the greenhouse over the winter. Now my greenhouse is unheated. I do a passive heating system. I've touched about that in prior videos and I will touch about on that as we get into more of the winter season. So if you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, click that bell icon. And this way you can follow along as to what I'm growing in the greenhouse, what I'm overwintering in the greenhouse and how I'm doing it. Let's talk about the raised beds over here. As a quick note, and I don't know if I've said this yet, but I do apologize for any background noise. There's a house being built just one block over and it's construction noise. What are you gonna do? Any hoot. Back in this bed here are my sweet potatoes, which I've never grown before, which so far so they look so good and they've been hit by deer numerous times, but the vines keep growing back, which is fabulous. And I think in the next month I'll be harvesting these. I have to do a little more research on sweet potatoes when the best time to harvest them is. If you guys have grown sweet potatoes before and you have any clue, please leave those comments below. The bed here in front of me may not look like much, but believe me, there's carrots growing in here and I hope to harvest them probably about December time. The bed here in front has onions and some calendula. Now, I don't think the calendula is gonna be able to flower before the uh, first frost, but you never know if we have a late first frost, who knows? But the calendula is growing and the onions will survive, apparently, according to my local garden center expert, <laughs> they will survive the winters down here just fine. And I should be hopefully be able to harvest them come early spring, late winter. We will see. This bed right here right now is a hot mess. Uh, we're not really gonna talk about it, but I, needless to say, I will be trying to grow gladiolus from seed in this bed next year. So that's pretty exciting. I'm looking forward to that. All along the fence line and right behind me here is birdhouse gourd vine. And hopefully I will wind up with a lot of birdhouse gourds. I have, a few have already fallen off the vine and they're drying up quite nicely out here. I have a lot more on the vine, so we'll have to wait and see. Again, over the course of the winter, who knows, maybe next spring slash summer, I will have a bunch of birdhouse gourds that maybe I will then wind up selling on to all of you guys. So stay tuned for that. Uh, right back here in this corner is where the birdhouse gourd vines are coming from. And in front of me here, I have a cinnamon basil. I grew it for the aesthetics. I grew it because I was curious, does it taste or smell like cinnamon? To me, not really, but it has these lovely purple flowers and the bees and the bugs have all been loving them. Right up here, not much to show. My herb beds have taken a beating this year. Well, they actually did quite well for most of the year, but then the one herb bed got infected or infested with some sort of butterfly thing, uh, not sure. The other one had just basil in it. The basil's gone over. I will be ripping all that out and probably planting my spinach in this one bed over here. Maybe both beds, I don't know. Last year I had uh, half decent germination, only about half the bed germinated, but I did have spinach pretty much throughout the entire winter, which was exciting. I just like to make a note here that I know I'm going pretty quickly over things because I don't want this video to be an hour and a half long. A lot of you don't want to watch an hour and a half video long video. If, you, if I'm wrong, if you do want to watch an hour and a half long video, please leave those comments below. But I thought I'd try to go through this as quickly as possible, show you some of the highlights, some of the things that'll be coming up. And if you're still with me, thank you. If you're a new subscriber, thank you. Ah, so let's move on with the flower garden tour. <laughs> Here I am standing at the entrance of the flower garden. Now the flower garden is not complete yet. Again, this is a growing garden. There's a lot still to do. There's a lot that will be happening over the next few years. Off to the side, basically where I'm pointing, I need to make a new bed and all the way out by the street, there'll be another new bed. These will be the borders that make up the framework of the flower garden. This has been an ongoing process and something I've been building for the last few years. It started off as one little four by or eight by eight square. It's now grown quite a bit. Let's talk about what's going on here with my dahlias. Now my dahlias have had a mixed year. They've done really well and they've gotten beaten up quite a bit. We had the heat, first the heat of the summer and it was a pretty hot summer, but a lot of the dahlias survived that. 
But then, of course, now as we got into late summer, early fall, we got hit with not one but two tropical depressions or tropical storms. One, I think, was tropical depression. That was Idalia. And I think, no, that was the storm. I can't remember. But one of them sort of grazed my area and the other one directly hit my area. <laughs> so... Either way, the dahlias, even though I had them fairly well staked, or at least I thought I had them fairly well staked, got beat up quite a bit. So you had the heat of the summer and then all that. That being said, one of the things I did to my dahlias this year was through uh, probably I think it was in I think it was in July, August, I wound up giving them a fertilizer boost and I used a product called Daddy Pete's Kickin' Chicken. It's a local southern thing, and essentially it's aged cow manure and chicken manure all mixed together in one. And I spread that around the bed, around each of the plants, and I basically let the rains soak that into the ground. And because of that, I feel that my dyes have done a little better this year, and they also bound, they, they bounced back from that summer heat and those two tropical depressions. And right now, I think my dahlias are looking pretty good. And as we get into the cooler temperatures of the fall, I think they'll do pretty well. What I will do then coming up in the winter, because I'm in growing zone 8A, I don't have to dig up my dahlia tubers because the ground doesn't freeze. I will probably just turn around and put down a little bit more compost maybe an inch, maybe two inches of compost, and then top that off with pine bark mulch, which I'm starting to move over to as opposed to the hardwood mulch. And I think hopefully that will then work well for me going into the future with the dahlias. But putting down that layer of extra compost and then the layer of mulch will protect the tubers over the course of the winter. I'm still on the fence about digging up maybe some of these tubers to see if I can divide them or do divide them. But if I do, I will make a video of that and share that with you guys. So let's look at the rest of the flower garden. Well, here we are on the other side of the entrance to the flower garden. And this space is really filled in this year. This is probably one of the older beds in this flower garden area. I had gladiolus here earlier in the summer. They looked fabulous. I had verbena. I still have the verbena. It is tired and beat up as many things are here in this flower garden due to the various storms, the heat, etc., etc. Right here in front of me, I have a massive hedge of <laughs> mums, which look like they're getting ready to pop and start flowering. In fact, some of the other ones I have in here have already started to flower, which is great. These will be popping open soon, which is exciting. These canas I'm not gonna to touch on every plant here in the flower bed, but these canis here have performed exceptionally well this year. What I will be doing this year though, is digging them out, dividing them. I will maybe put a few back here, maybe somewhere else within this bed, and the rest will probably be going off to a new bed that I hope to build this fall, and then maybe replant those either th at that time or early next spring. Now I have clusters of other Gladiolus, which I think I may try digging up some of the gladiolus this fall to see if I can divide them because gladiolus produce their own corms. And theoretically, if I can pull up some of them and divide them, I can use them to plant elsewhere in the garden to get more gladiolus, obviously. I, I've never done it before, so it's just more of a learning experience because you can read about something in a book or you can see a YouTube video, but until you get your hands dirty, you know, and get that experience yourself, it's a whole nother animal. These cana here are actually blocking a peony, which is in the back. And that peony behind these cana will probably be flowering next year, because I believe it'll be the third year. And if I'm not mistaken, peonies bloom the third year. So I want to see my peonies without it being blocked by the cana. So these cana will get dug up and moved. That being said, these canas did exceptionally well this year. And so again, I'm looking forward to digging them up, dividing them, and then replanting them elsewhere in the garden. So the flower garden itself right now is a big weedy mess. There's various grasses growing in here which shouldn't be growing in here. And there's other plants in here which need to be deadheaded and trimmed back. But you can see the space is evolving, developing. This bed right here was is all new this year and it's done pretty well. Certain plants have not done so, so well. Other plants have done better than others. I had a snapdragon which was in a pot and that has done well this year. 
once I planted into the ground. I have other plants which I planted out this year which didn't do so well, various salvias. I have other salvias which have done exceptionally well. So the, the flower garden is, is growing and developing and there's gonna be spaces and blank, there's gonna be spaces and gaps which I will definitely be filling in next year. And probably the biggest change recently to the flower garden uh, has been the addition of some box, boxwoods. And let me show you that. So right along here recently I received, uh, I think it was about 10, yeah, 10 or so boxwoods, a dozen, I'm sorry, it was a dozen boxwoods from a garden center that was clearancing out their small sprinter boxwoods. And what I hope to do is eventually have a nice four foot tall hedge all along the outside edge of the flower garden. Now I'll have sprinters on this side. I'm gonna have a different type of shrub on the, on the street side and then another type of shrubbery hedge on the far side when I eventually get that done. But this was the latest greatest and planting them now, I'm pretty confident that these will be fine over the winter because I don't suspect we will have another brutal winter and they'll just start thriving and hopefully I can get more sprinters that I, I do have some growing from cuttings and who knows, maybe next year I'll be able to find some more great deals on sprinters and continue this all the way down the outside edge of the flower garden and grow, again, a nice hedge to incorporate the flower garden into its own room slash space. And as I mentioned before, sort of ad nauseum, <laughs> the flower beds that ran that we were just looking at will continue basically here along the street side and then eventually up back towards the dahlia beds. And this will give me a lot more planting area and it will also allow me to grow a lot more different plants. And for instance, this space right here, this area right here is in shade most of the day. So I should probably be able to get away with planting some, let's say coral bells here or more foxgloves plants that do like more shade and are deer resistant. Deer resistant is always a huge thing. And again, the outside edge will be covered eventually with a hedge line. Now I'm, I'm experimenting with a couple of hedges and as, I, as the garden grows and those decisions are made, I will let you guys know and bring you along for the ride because that's what this is all about. Me sharing, growing my garden and how I'm growing it and what decisions I'm making. Let's take a quick look at some of the other things that are happening here in the garden. Right here on the other side of the driveway, I have my two pear trees and they've been hit with a blight for the last few years. Basically after the first year I planted them, they seem to develop a fire blight of some sort. And I've been battling that for the past two, three years. I think it's three years now. And I'm done, I've given up. Uh, <laughs> so, these trees will probably be going away either this winter or early next spring. And I, my wife and I haven't decided what we're, going to what we're going to replace these with. Stay tuned and hopefully I make up my mind by next spring and I get these trees replaced with something nicer. This is one of my two front, front of the house beds. And I garden these beds as you would almost a cottage garden sort of think of cottage garden style planting where it's all mostly willy-nilly. This bed right now is a bit weedy, uh, so it needs to be tended to, which I will wind up doing soon. Also, we'll have some plants removed from here for various reasons. One of them is a daylily, which the deer often like to eat on. So I'll be removing that daylily, dividing it and planting it out into the veg garden. Uh, there's also these Montauk daisies, which do weird things things. They grow, they start dying back, they flower. Uh, very unusual. I'll be removing the Montauk daisies from this space and putting something else here next spring. I'm going to weed it all out and I will turn around and then remulch and basically put this bed to sleep for, until next spring where I'll then continue to add plants to it. And But I don't foresee in the near future any major changes to the shape or the size of the bed because I made those last winter. Let's look at the other front raised bed. This here is my other front flower bed. And this one underwent major changes last winter, this past winter and spring. And one of them being was I installed the 
brick walkway, which was never there before. And these flower beds were much, they didn't exist. Uh, where the boxwoods are is basically where the flower beds were. So when I put the brick walkway in, I expanded the beds themselves, which gave me a lot more room. Now I planted a bunch of different plants in here this year, and I was hoping that some of them would perform better than others, but they, it's, you know, sometimes, you know, you try something new, especially if you're growing a plant from seed that you've never grown before and you get different results. But the daylilies over here will stay. The snapdragons will stay. They're doing well. I have red hot pokers throughout. They do well here. Uh, I have echinacea, which I've planted, which are hanging in. So I think next year the echinacea will really take off. And strangely enough, I have some foxglove here in what gets basically six full hours of sun and they do well, they're, they're hanging in there. So I'm hoping that next year they go to flower and they set seed and they help seed out the area as it were. I had a, oh, what's this? Another type of snapdragon right here, which died, didn't do well. I have a few salvias, which have done well. I have sages, which have done okay. And then over by the bird bath, I planted some dark opal basil. And that was a nice annual to plant. It adds something a little different to the garden space itself. Let's take a closer look at my drainage system over here at the corner of, at the corner. Here at the corner of my house, underneath my crepe myrtle, which needs to be trimmed, but I won't trim it until the winter time. And I can show you guys that in a video if you want. Again, if you have any thoughts, comments, anything you want to see, anything that I'm wrong about, anything you feel you want to see more of, please leave those comments below. I'm always open to suggestions, etc., etc. But what I did, because the flower bed is here and the drain pipe is right back there, I didn't want it necessarily just draining into the space. So what I did was I created this uh, sort of trough and it comes down into what I call a splash pad. So the water comes down, hits the splash pad, and life is good. Nothing is cemented into place. And underneath here is something like, what do we got? Something like six different holes that I drilled and filled with large stones for the water to drain down into the ground. That being said, this low area right in here does get very, very damp, very wet, and slightly flooded when we have very heavy rains. But that's okay because what I planted all around here are irises that appreciate that water. They, they need that water. Uh, I have a Japanese variegated. I have a couple other Siberians and they seem to be doing quite well. In fact, the Japanese variegated seems to have divided since I planted it in the spring, which is kind of weird, uh, but it's doing well. So that's what I've done here. And that was one of the bigger changes this year as well. Uh, over here, again, more mums, and I even have some foxgloves back here, which again, hoping next year they all go to flower and they set seed and any plant that self seeds itself, I'm okay with. And if it starts to become a bully or a thug, I can always remove it, but it's, if the plant can propagate itself, that's less work that I have to do. Uh, let's take a quick look at the side garden, how that's filling out, and then we'll wrap the video up. Okay, so this is the bed at the side of the house. I got a driveway right here. And this was probably, when I first moved in, the shadiest spot in the garden. In our, it still is actually the shadiest spot in the garden until I, many years from now, build, my, build out my shade garden. But several changes happened to this bed this year. One of them was I made this bed deeper. I planted, I moved these elephant ears from where they were in front of the house in blistering heat and sun, and I moved them to the side here, and they're doing quite well. I have planted in between some primrose. I've got foxgloves. I got another iris. I have some unidentified iris here. Along the back wall, I have ginger lily. I did a video earlier in the season about the agapanthus that I planted out, and I have a few other agapanthus in the garden. There's daylilies, salvias. I planted some coleus in here this year. A Maltese, not a Maltese cross, cardinal flower, which has only started to flower recently, one of them out of the four or five that I planted. And of course, at either end, I have oak leaf hydrangeas. So the space is, I'm trying to fill the space up with more and more plants. I'm going to continue to try to fill the space up with more and more plants because the more plants I put in here, the less space there'll be, there, there will be for weeds. 
And if I can accomplish that, it's one less space that I will eventually have to weed. So this, again, just another developing space and it's just another space that I'm filling in with plants and ever evolving space. And there are probably some plants in here that I may move out in time and move to a new spot in the garden once I develop new areas. But for now, this is the, the shade garden. So here we are back where we started all this from in front of the greenhouse. So everything was just very wet today from the rains that we had yesterday. Things are just starting to dry out now, but instead of just doing another planting video, especially since there were so many new subscribers, I thought I would just do a quick, and hopefully this video when I'm done editing is fairly quick, <laughs> quick video running around the garden, showing you some of the things that are happening, showing you the basic gist and the layout. If I didn't already mention it or put it in the video someplace, you can see more of the layout of the garden itself. If you go over to growinggreenfinger.com, the garden, I believe it's one of the uh, links up top. And there I have a map of basically how the garden is laid out. I try to update that map yearly as things change. And basically everything in the garden right now has, has been spoken for. There's only one gap left in the garden that I don't have an idea for. And that's between the orchard and the flower garden. It's about 40 feet wide, 60 feet long. So if you guys have any thoughts or ideas, there's Japanese gardens, there's grass borders, there's, there's so many different things I could do with a full sun location, but I'm not sure what I wanna do with the location. And there may be something that I'm not thinking of. So if you guys have a thought as to what I could do with that gap or that space, please leave those comments below. Uh, you know, the shade garden idea just came to me earlier this year and I thought that's brilliant, but I also looked at it and went, it gets a little too much sun right now. So it's gonna take a little bit of time for me to develop the hedges that I'm gonna be putting on that side of the garden. And it's gonna take me a little bit of time for those trees to grow up. So I figured maybe roughly five years before I really start building out that space. I'll, I'll actually start before the five years, but it probably won't be, five, it'll probably be about five years before I start planting in that space. And that's only because I need time to, again, put those hedges into place, put those trees into place to start providing the shade that I need to plant the ferns and whatnot. So this is what's going on in my garden. This is my garden. Again, acre and a half, it's growing. It's, I'm growing a garden here in Eastern North Carolina. It's developing, there's a lot more to come. There's many projects that I'm doing this winter because here it doesn't necessarily get as cold as it does in other places. We don't get snow. If we do, it's the apocalypse. <laughs> so I can come outside during the winter time and I can do various projects. I'll be doing a sidewalk leading from my back door uh, towards the driveway, much as I did the front walkway. I'll be doing something like that along the, the back of the house that I'll be installing hopefully new flower beds up in the flower garden to finish sort of building that structure out as to where the borders will be. Uh, I may wind up getting, hopefully I have time and uh, monies, etc., to build a tool shed here in the vegetable garden. Right now, a lot of my tools are stored over my garage and I have to bring them out. And then sometimes I leave them in the veg, in the greenhouse. And that becomes a thing because they're not supposed to be in the greenhouse. <sighs> Yeah, that's a lot, it's a lot. So hopefully I'll get to that this uh, winter. So leave that project going on. Oof. Sophie's getting heavy. She's 14.6 pounds now. I took her to the vet yesterday for a little checkup there. And uh, she's growing. She's, she's not a little uh, five pound puppy anymore. <laughs> Again, so many projects coming up, so many things happening. There'll be winter growing in the greenhouse. The list goes on. So. If you haven't subscribed, please subscribe, click that bell icon to be notified when I do post a new video. There's gonna be more important news coming up hopefully in the next few weeks as to projects that I've been working on for a while that I hopefully have to have, for, have for, to fruition in the next few weeks. <laughs> I've been teasing them for a while and I, again, they're, they're almost at a head right now. So stay tuned, they'll be coming up. Some important news, some big news hopefully and I think that's gonna wrap it up for today. I'm gonna to go find out what the little dog's up to and I'm gonna catch you on the next one. Bye-bye.